oftentimes we're too focused on what somebody else is doing for the Lord. And in the meanwhile, we're not doing a thing. So let's do this. Let's worry about ourselves and how is our walk with God before we start picking out how better somebody else could be. He was looking to see if anyone else was working. <laughs> Verse uh, number 22, Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Jesus said, don't worry about what he's going to do. Just do what I tell you to do. Follow me. And so we see they've been given a new mission. One to win others and to teach others. Just like us, once we've received Jesus Christ, it's our job to tell somebody else. It's our job to go feed somebody else. You know, I prayed many years ago and asked the Lord to just teach me the Bible so I can help somebody else understand it. I didn't think it would be in this role. I just wanted to get closer to God and say, Lord, show me so that I can show somebody else. And that needs to be all of our attitude every day, Lord. We need to look for the Lord throughout the day, see Him working in our life, and then we'll see Him more. In summary, if you look at verses 30 and 31 of chapter 20, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of His disciples, which were not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. Whether or not you believe what I have to say, believe this book. Believe what it says. It is true. And then in 24 and 25 of John chapter 21, as we already read, the entire purpose of, of this is to prove that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and give you confidence in that. And then to give you some direction on what to do with it. The Gospel of John as a whole was written to prove the deity of Jesus Christ. This gospel was given for you and I, and now it's up to us to go tell somebody else. It's up to us to, do we love other people? Do, do we love the Lord? I'm pretty sure I could say for all of you that you would say, I love the Lord. Okay? If you say you love the Lord, how are you showing it? Are you telling somebody else? Are you witnessing to somebody else? Or when given the opportunity... Are you telling somebody what the Lord's done for you? Or do you, do you simply say, hey, let me pray with you over that? Or, you know, I can pray for you. Something simple like that. You may be able, not be able to do much, not be able to get out very much or do anything, or do, do much physical stuff. But you can always tell somebody you're praying for. Maybe call somebody up you haven't talked to in a long time. And see how they're doing and witness to them over the phone. Maybe the next time a telemarketer calls you, you witness to him. I heard this story recently. This preacher was talking. He said, he does what I do. When a telemarketer calls, I like to mess with him. I had one call the other day, and she asked about my car's warranty was about to expire. I said, uh, well, on which one? She said, the one with the highest mileage. I said, well, which one is that? And she said, you know, the, the one with the highest mileage. I said, oh, okay. And I said, well, what about the other one? I said, I said I'm good on that. She said, well, what about the other one? I said, oh, I get, great, get, I get great mileage on my bicycle. I'm like, how many miles does it need to have on my bicycle? <laughs> and she hung up on me. But I like messing with them sometimes. But oftentimes, you know what happened? I, I got off the phone with her, and the Lord smote me and said, maybe you should have witnessed to her instead of messing around with her. I, like I said, there was this pastor I heard a story from. He, he, would do, he would do that. He'd mess around with people. Instead, he promised that the next time a telemarketer would call him, he would try to be a witness to him. The guy ended up getting saved on the phone after about 45 minutes of talking to him. And then the guy got his boss on the phone, and he thought he was going to get yelled at. His boss got saved because he just was a witness wherever the Lord gave him an opportunity. To challenge him, maybe the next time a telemarketer calls you, instead of hanging up on him, ask him if he can pray with him, pray for him, or witness to him. You never know who you're going to reach. 
here are some verses that, John, that clarify who God really is, who Jesus Christ really is. In John chapter 1 and verse 14, He's the Word. In verse 18 of John chapter 1, He's God manifest in the flesh. John chapter 1 verse 34, He's the Son of God. In three, six, chapter 3 verse 16 through 18, He is the Son of God. In chapter 5 verses 19 through 24, He's found equal with God. John chapter 8, 56 through 58, he's the God of eternity when he says, Before Abraham was, I am. And he says in Exodus 3, 14, Whom shall I say, or who do I tell sent me? He said, Tell them that I am that sent thee. And then in John chapter 17, verse number 1, he is the Son of God. In John chapter 17, and verse number 21, he is equal with God. I, I think it's a, we can... We can, I can boldly say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is God manifest in the flesh. Now explaining that, how the Trinity is, and explaining how Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are one can be, I'm not going to say it's easy. But great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. The Bible tells us it's a mystery. And that's where a little bit of faith comes in. But I'll give you a good example of an egg. You have an egg. An egg has three parts, right? And all three are part of one. You have the shell, you have the white, and you have the yolk. All three can serve a different purpose. I know people, and some of you all probably do it, take the eggshell and use it in your fertilizer. Place it around your plants as fertilizer. Uh, then you have the white of the egg that is called for just the white of the egg in certain recipes. And then you have the yolk, and some people only eat the yolk, but all three make up the egg. You take the yolk out, it's not a complete egg. You take the, the, the white out, it's not a complete egg. You take the shell off, once again, it's not a complete egg. So for the easiest explanation for how great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifested in the flesh, that these three are one, right, is, is the egg. And God gives us uh, symbols of the Trinity throughout everything. I mean, you look at, you look at an apple with a skin and a, the meat of the apple and then the core. You have the egg. You have all through nature you see it. But the, the Gospel of John, of everything that we've gone through, I pray that maybe you've got a, a clear understanding on some things in the Gospel of John. Or maybe it's just encouraged you a little bit more in the Gospel of John. But John's one of the greatest books that we can have. And uh, the one that we get out to other people. But it, and it's designed to give you some confidence and some faith that Jesus Christ is God. Risen from the dead. Paid the penalty for your sin. And because of his re resurrection from the dead, hey, guess what? He's coming again. And he's coming for you and I. And we will get into, uh, Lord willing, some of that here soon. But uh, pray with me as I, as I figure out a, you lost me? Can you hear me? Okay. Everybody else can hear me. Um, but as we, as we close out the Gospel of John, uh, pray that, the Lord would uh, press upon my heart what to do. I have an idea of where we're going to go. We might just go right into the book of Romans, which is another great one, right after the Gospel of John, um, or do some other things. But thank you all for being here. We'll pray it, and then we'll be dismissed. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, or this evening, or thank you for the Gospel of John. Thank you for allowing us to have it, and uh, have it in our hands, and to be able to understand uh, for your understanding.